So I'm on a mission to make technology more embedded and more elegant. And I call these ordinary objects with extraordinary capabilities enchanted objects. Do you remember Frodo had a sword that anticipates where orcs were? Inspired by this, I created an ambient umbrella that anticipated when rain was due. It, it glowed with a little sprinkle of LEDs whenever rain was forecast. So you can see there's this dialogue between fiction and between invention. Now, these stories that, that run uh, from the Hans Christian Andersen to the Brothers Grimm, uh, they run in our cultural bloodstream. The, the shoes that, that make us fly, the purse that replenishes, or the bottle of wine, or the vat of wine, all of these things are things that we know. We know these stories, and they reveal things about us and what we desire. Do you remember the mirror that revealed who's the fairest of them all? This is a mirror for Neiman Marcus that an inventor is doing that reveals which version of yourself or which outfit is the fairest of them all, especially if you can see the backside of yourself. Or this pen from a noto that's both an ordinary pen and also conceals a camera and a microphone so it stores everything you write and records the lecture. These are ordinary things with extraordinary capabilities. Or you've seen these trash cans all around Boston, right? The sort of magical thing about these trash cans is they only call the truck to pick them up when they're full. So you reduce labor and, uh, and, and make a greener city. I wanted to show you this video from the New York Times of, of my house in Brookline. So enchanted objects are ordinary things that have the same functionality that they had before, except now they can talk, they're connected. These are ordinary things that have extraordinary capabilities. When we're creating technology for the home, really we want to make something that's seamless and transparent. And that as opposed to having things sort of call out and draw your attention to it, make it a more ambient experience. It will just continue to behave with those everyday objects as we, as we do in the world. And we'll, we can remain focused on connectivity between two people. What we're seeing now is this proliferation of different devices that are you know, moving out from the cell phone and onto our bodies and into the world. So in the middle of our living room is a coffee table that uh, has Google Earth embedded in the coffee table. And I just found that having access to this amazing zoomable map completely changes how often we talk about travel and how often we talk about the world and how often we look up places that are mentioned. And it's really, it's nice to have, you know, this, this beautiful large reference object, you know, sitting in the middle of our living space. Our devices can be a lot simpler and the interaction to them can be a lot simpler. The internet connected umbrella can just be an umbrella that only shows whether it's going to rain. You don't need to tap on an icon or do anything that seems sort of artificial. We come from a time in which we need to adapt to our homes and not the other way around. So what if our home could be a platform that we personalize and we customize? The key is how do we create this ecosystem, these technologies that allow us to move from one experience to the other in the more seamless, the most seamless, uh, most uh, magical way. No? Some people might think that a connected home is overwhelming, that there'll be so much information in the connected home that it's just a cacophonous environment and you wouldn't want to live there. But I think about how we decorate our homes today. We put photographs everywhere, we put paintings up, we put post-it notes up. You know, there's a lot of decoration and adornment in the home. And I think if enchanted objects can be designed in the right way, we're going to want hundreds of them around us. I think what we're going to see is a, a, a new renaissance where designers as well as computer scientists are going to really make a really big impact in the type of technology that we see in the home. The history of computers has mostly been about efficiency. I think one of the things that's changing is that enchanted objects can be about adding motion and an add magic to the fabric of our everyday lives and experiences. So. <clears throat> So I made a poster, which is a periodic table, which tries to organize all of these Internet of Things things based on human aspirations. And I just want to walk through a couple of these categories, because I think it changes a lot about how we interact with technology. 
So the sort of big first aspiration that we all have that computers tend to satisfy is, the, is to be all-knowing. Um, <clears throat> this is typically uh, sort of manifest in stories through uh, a, a water that, that provides clairvoyance or a crystal ball. And I made just such a crystal ball at ambient devices that was designed to be a single pixel browser so it could show any dynamic information that's online. So it can show what's the weather going to be tomorrow, if you have a child that's asthmatic, what's the, what's the pollen count, uh, what, is it too windy or not say it windy enough for sailing, uh, what's the first derivative of barometric pressure, which is sort of indicative of whether the fish are biting, uh, do you need, does your garden need watering? And I'm very proud to say that that company today, still based in Cambridge, is working with energy companies because they found that if you show the energy consumption in the home on this glanceable display, which you can also pick up and see the details, people will conserve 20% more of their discretionary energy spend. And so now this is being given away, which is the best business model, by energy companies so that, so that they can avoid brownouts and new plant construction. So what we really learned at least from ambient, uh, was that this notion of having data that's unavoidable really changes people's behavior. So when you map blood sugar levels onto a glanceable display, or when the next bus is coming, um, like people, people respond to this and they change their behavior in a, in a predictable way. So next, I think we all have this desire to be connected to another person. Many of my students at the Media Lab make pillows and jewelry and all kinds of things that connect two people. And I wanted to talk about the Weasleys, which, which Mrs. Weasley had nine members of her family, which we, she mapped into a location-based service onto a clock that was in the, in the kitchen. And she could see sort of who's at Quidditch, who's lost in the forest, who's in mortal peril. You know, it's convenient. Um, so we, I made a doorbell in our house that, uh, that, that gives you a sense of who's homebound at the end of the day. You know, the time of day that's always fraught with all kinds of confusion of who's coming. So as, as each child has a uh, ringtone, sort of like Peter and the Wolf. You know, everyone has a sound, and they and they now they make those sounds as they as the, as they are homebound. So it's sort of a nice way of of keeping in touch without having to plot everybody on a map. So safekeeping. I think there are many objects like uh, like this uh, flower power sensor that tries to keep your plants from dying. Um, the one that I wanted to highlight is another project from the Media Lab where we built for Bank of America these wallets. And the data from your monthly budget is sent to the wallet, which has a variable strength um, hinge in it. So it gets more <laughs> resistive eh, as you're blowing through your budget. <laughs> So you can see these displays can be pixel-based or sound-based or even haptic, even haptic devices. Um, the world of quantified self, I think most of are familiar with it from Fitbit bracelets to Jawbone to toothbrushes and scales that all cast data into the cloud. Um, I was inspired by this wonderful project at the Media Lab called, called the uh, Music Bottles, which is a jazz trio which, where every instrument is contained in one of these bottles. Uh, and to focus on this issue of 50% of us in the US are prescribed some medication by our doctor, and we take it about half of the time, <laughs> I made a smart pill bottle cap that fits on an ordinary amber vial um, and subtly pulses with light and then gets a little bit more obnoxious over time and can send you a text message. Uh, every week it can send an email to a loved one so that you can make sure that your dad is doing the right thing and vice versa. Um, and it can even cast data to your doctor or order, order refills from the pharmacy automatically. And we, we worked with MGH that we did a randomized control trial. This is the, the, what the data looks like for normal people, just a baseline, just collecting data. And this is what it looks like when we turn on all those services. So it's a huge difference uh, in behavior. And that's, you know, these enchanted objects have that ability to change, to change health, to change transportation. Um, and you know, this is an enchanted object that could reduce healthcare costs by some accounts in this country by billions and billions of dollars. And I think the hope here is this, that this becomes standard medication packaging. It's free, it just comes you know, when you get a prescription. This is the network. And AT&T loves network it because it's a totally subsidized way of putting a cell phone into every in home here, in America, which you can either see as positive or negative, but in any case, you won't be paying because you'll be reducing healthcare costs. Medicine talks. 
So let's talk about the aspiration to for effortless travel. I mean, I think I want self-driving cars. I would be happy with an electric hub that allowed me to commute without sweating. Um, <laughs> but remember the Marauder's Map, again, from, from Harry Potter? Uh, the Marauder's Map showed you where all the people were at Hogwarts. We have the data now for where all public transportation buses are. It's just not displayed in the right place. It really needs to be on the bus pole itself. It needs to be embedded, because then if people trust the bus and you have more precision about how long you're waiting, you're so much more likely to take the bus. So we could really make greener cities if we embedded this information at the right place. My favorite category is, is, is expression. This is this aspiration that we all have to make, to create, and to play. Uh, and I'm wearing today, just to freak you all out, a, uh, <laughs> I've been interested in photography for a long time. And, and cameras, as you see by the pen and other examples, are getting smaller and smaller. So I'm, I'm, I'm wearing one today. Uh, it's a life logging camera that's, that takes a picture automatically every 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, to give you a sense of what that looks like, it compiles a video of your day, sort of a time-lapse view of your day, which reveals a lot, right? It reveals in time inside, time outside, time in front of screens, time in front of people. Are people smiling at you when you interact with them, or are they frowning? Maybe that's an indication of your own depression. Um, <laughs> but I think it reveals a lot. And obviously, all of this data, there are 1.8 billion photos that are shared on social media today. It's just overwhelming, the, the signal that's already there. And with life logging cameras, it's going to become even more of a torrent and overwhelming. So I'm currently engaged in a company called Ditto that is reading all of these photos. So we look at all Tumblr photos, a third of all Twitter photos, and we look for things like what are the products that are contained in those photos based on the pattern of the Vera Bradley purse or KFC or the car brands or, the, um, or other brands. And it really reveals this sort of sense of what people are interested in and what people are doing. And it's a black box for, for marketers and sort of a gold mine to explore those things. So for you, I want you to make enchanted objects. And I think you can easily climb this ladder of enchantment from, from taking, take an ordinary thing like a trash can. If you embed the, a camera or a barcode scanner on the lid of the trash can, the first step is to connect it. The next step is to personalize it. With our trash can, we connected it to your Amazon account. So it would put the things you threw away on your wish list. Um, at, or Peapod here in Brookline. And, the last, and so the last thing was to create a story that sort of lived in the object or in the service. And our story was that there was a guy that lives in the trash can, sort of like Oscar, which gives you a hard time, or at least he suggests things that are better, things sourced locally, like <laughs> coconut water all the way from Asia, are you sure? Um, or things that are in season or lower cost or better for your health. Third box of cookies this week? But if you don't like his suggestions, you just kick the can. So it's sort of a natural, it's a natural interface. <laughs> So I hope we can all make objects that have interfaces that are more uh, tangible, more haptic, like the wallets, more incidental, more just built into medication packaging, more embedded, more expressive, like Guitar Hero. And ultimately, this will make, give us a more humanistic interface with technology. Thank you very much. Thanks.